Hi everyone, um, like Scotty said, my name is Basha Chetty and I'm the Marine Research Technician at KZN Wildlife. Even though I'm directly involved in the total monitoring, it is actually my co-author Santosh Bachu that was supposed to be given me this call. Um, our 53rd turtle nesting season started on Sunday, so um, unfortunately Santosh had to take one for the team and sort out our uh, human resources issues. So please bear with me, I'm going to try my best to get through this talk. So globally there are seven species of turtles and in South Africa we are lucky enough to have five of those species in our coastal waters and those are the leatherback, the loggerhead, the hawksbill, the olive ridley and the green turtles. Of these species it is only the female adults of the leatherback and loggerhead turtles that we find nesting on South African, water, uh, on, on South African shores. Just as a side note, um, the leatherback and the loggerhead species are our main nesting species, but in recent years we've actually had a few green species nesting um, on our shores, and so that's just something that we're keeping an eye out on. So what started turtle conservation in South Africa? In 1963, the then, then Natal Parks Board, now known as Ezenvelo Kezel and Wildlife, responded to rumors that there were turtles nesting on our Makutunam beaches on, in northern KZN. Um, upon investigation, the local team that was dispatched found these rumors to be true. There was indeed um, leatherback and loggerhead turtles nesting on those beaches. And so um, what spurred on the board's interest even more was the fact that there were constant reports that the nesting turtles were being poached by the locals. As you can see in the two pictures, um, this was quite a common occurrence and known as turtle graveyards. And so it was immediately recognized that the area needed more active conservation and strict enforcement in terms of the Natal Coastal Fisheries Ordinance. And so the Natal Parks Board then authorized um, a survey of the leatherback and loggerhead turtles. And um, it was from the Mozambique border, 60 kilometers south, and the first survey started on the 1st of December, 1963. Now, 53 years later, it is one of the longest running and most successful turtle conservation and monitoring programs in the world. Okay, so first on the, the scenes um, were people like Hugh, um, Hugh McAllister, you can see there with the, the loggerhead skull, um, we have John Bass, who I'm told was an avid photographer, and you can see him with his camera. Mike Mentis with the Rock Lobster Dinner, and Henny Van Skoor and George Hughes, who are busy investigating a loggerhead turtle that is nesting. Um, the Bunga Neck Research, um, Research Establishment was, was established in the mid-1960s, and for those of you who know the Bunga Neck Shack, as it is affectionately known, um, you can see that it has changed quite a bit. So the initial objective of the turtle monitoring program was to not only protect the turtles, but to see if there was, um, to monitor the recovery of the turtles, to see if there was sufficient recovery in order to consider um, consumptive harvesting. And sufficient recovery at that time, um, they thought to be more than log 500 loggerhead turtles and more than 200 um, leatherback turtles. However, because of the worldwide decline in numbers of these species, consumptive harvesting was not an option. And so the monitoring was geared eventually just to conservation. Um, the tagging of the turtles ensures the protection of the nesting females as well as the nests and the eggs and the hatchlings. And in order to do that, ESM Velo staff as well as the turtle monitors that we hire do daily patrols and it ensures that some, it ensures some form of protection um, to the life st stages that I've just mentioned. Apart from this, data is collected, is collected annually to document each turtle nesting season. Turtles give us a very good opportunity to collect data, basic morphometric data as well as nesting data. And what we do with this data is that we look at their distributions as well as how, um, how they're nesting. Um, and this gives Isambelo an opportunity to gauge the success or the failures of our turtle protection. 
Apart from this, um, we also collect data on any events that occur that may be used for future population analyses. Okay, so where exactly do our turtles nest? The rookery in South Africa is approximately 150 kilometers stretch of beach from the Mozambican border down to Cape Vidal within the Isimangaliso Wetland Park World Heritage Site. But the actual monitoring area was a stretch of a 60 kilometer <coughs> stretch of beach from Mabibi to the Mozambican border. The beaches of the Isimangaliso Wetland Park are actually the perfect place for these turtles to nest. They like beaches that are relatively undisturbed, and that means less development, less light. And they also like beaches that are going to be stable. And the beaches of the Isimangaliso Wetland Park are backed by vegetated or unvegetated primary dunes, which extend into the high stable vegetated secondary dunes. So it is actually the perfect place for the turtles to nest. So um, we employ 37 community members from the local communities um, to collect data for us. And they go through a very stringent interview process and a two-day training session on how to handle the turtles, how to tag them, how to microchip them, um, how to measure them, as you can see here. So we, so we do theory and practical. And um, they also collect data files. Now, these community members are not very educated, so we have to keep the, the data sheet simple so that we get accurate information from it. So it's very, very basic uh, morphometric and, and nesting data that we collect. And then I'm just going to go into the trends um, since the start of, of, of the turtle um, nesting program. And this is for the loggerhead turtles. And just note that this is in the index area. So this is the area between Vanga Neck and Cozima. And this is the area over time that has received the most um, effort in terms of monitoring. And you can see that from the start in 1963, the loggerhead turtles have increased <coughs> exponentially. And this is what we now call a dramatically recovering population. So they are responding very positively to the beach protection since 1963. The leatherback turtles, on the other hand, is not as promising as the loggerhead turtles. Um, there is very high interannual variation, and the numbers of nests are a bit worrying. The, the, the numbers are looking stable. Um, even though it is not increasing, it is not decreasing, but it is still a bit worrying. And this also is in the key index area. So why the difference in the nesting trends? Um, as I've mentioned in my previous slides, we measure success by the number of nests. Both of these turtles, and you can compare the two graphs here, receive identical conservation effort. Um, in fact, the loggerhead turtles um, reach sexual maturity a lot younger than, than the loggerhead turtles. Um, they also have um, bigger clat sizes and they nest more per season than the loggerhead turtles. So why is it the loggerhead turtles are the only ones that are benefiting from the protection? And so we need to investigate further. And this is where um, Dr. Ronelle Nell and her students from the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University come, come in. They are doing a lot of research, and, and one of the things that they're looking into is the pivotal um, temperature of our nests and whether our beaches are producing more females than they are males. For those of you that don't know a lot about turtle biology, the temperature, the core temperature of the nest determines the sex of the hatchlings. So if the temperature of the sand is between, say, um, 25 and 28 degrees <coughs> Celsius, then the hatchlings will be male, and if the temperature of the nest are between 28 and 32 degrees Celsius, then the, the hatchlings will be female. And so we need to look at these sex ratios. What makes sense is that our beaches are producing more loggerhead females and more leatherback males, um, but there could be something more. Um, it could be that we are just undersampling the leatherback turtles. And this is why in 2014, 
we formally extended our monitoring area a further 25 kilometers south from Mabibi to Sudwana Bay. And I'll go into why we did that in a little while. So this is just to show you where the loggerhead turtles like nesting along our stretch of beach from, um, from the Mozambican border down to Sudwana Bay. And you can see that the loggerheads are all over the place, but they have a very clear preference for this area, which is between Banga Neck and Cozy Mouth. Okay. The leatherback turtles, on the other hand, um, are all over the place as well, but they have a slight preference for the southern beaches, which is why we decided to extend the monitoring a further 25 kilometers south and see if we picked up um, a substantial amount of leatherback nest, nesting activity. Okay, so this is just some stats for the last um, six years for the loggerhead turtles. I'm not going to go into too much detail into this. Um, the important thing to note is that the numbers are fairly stable and they're more or less the same. And the loggerheads are doing really well. But what I wanted to focus on was the stats for the new 25 kilometer stretch of beach that we've started monitoring. And if you look at it, it's a 12.7% increase in activity just in that 25 kilometer stretch of beach, which is absolutely incredible. And so these numbers are going to look a lot better. Not that the loggerheads were, were doing badly, but it's actually looking very much better. And the leatherbacks, um, same. Um, I don't want to go into the details. I just wanted to focus on the new section. And the increase, the, the total activity has increased by 27.5% in that new 25 kilometer stretch of beach, which is absolutely amazing. Okay, and so in the early 1970s, the scientists wanted to figure out a way to, to, to tell when loggerhead turtles would reach maturity. And so the marginal scoots of hatchlings, you can see them down the side here, were actually clipped, or what we call notched, um, in certain codes. For every year, we'd have a different code. And we eventually wanted to see um, how long it took that hatchling to mature and come onto the beaches to nest. And by doing this, we uh, have realized that it takes the leatherback, uh, the loggerheads, about 34 years to, to mature. Our loggerhead and leatherback turtles receive titanium tags on their flippers. And on those titanium tags, um, we have a return address. And so when our turtles are sent off after they've nested, they go about foraging and Eventually, um, we get tag returns. Most of them um, are fatalities. But this is just a map showing you um, over the last 17 years where we've had tag returns from. And this is about 80 turtles. And you can see how important the east coast of Africa is. And this actually shows us if, um, where the foraging grounds and the, the home ranges are for the loggerhead turtles. So the east, of, east coast of Africa is very important, and they went right up to Somalia over there. And the west coast of Madagascar, very important um, foraging grounds as well. We've had turtles go far east as Seychelles and Mauritius. And the important thing to remember here is that it's not only important for us to protect our turtles, but regional management, because our turtles are actually foraging in other areas. So regional management is really important. So the flipper tags gives us a good indication of, um, of where the turtles go and their fatalities. But how do they get there and what parts do they take to get there? And this is where satellite tagging comes, comes into play. Um, so we know where they nest and we know what their distribution is on our beaches. But where do they go after that? And this is where our um, colleagues from the Department of Environmental Affairs have helped us. They have bought us um, a couple of satellite tags and we've attached the, these onto our loggerhead and leatherback turtles to see where they go after they nest. And in this um, slide, I just wanted to show you, to emphasize the little eddies and the gyres here 
um, along the Indian and going into the Atlantic Ocean. These are tracks of leatherback turtles taken, taken between 2006 and 2009. And you can clearly see that the turtles follow these little eddies and gyres in search of food. This area here is called Walter's Shoal. It is a series of underwater mountain ranges, which is known to be very, um, very good foraging grounds. It's very um, high in food. And the turtles also like going there. Um, here again, the turtle followed the little eddies and gyres. And this one followed the ridges all the way up to Walter Shoal, up to the Seychelles, and back again. Okay, this, um, these turtles were from 2007, 2008. This track here is the longest track we have of a leatherback turtle. And it shows that they are transoceanic. It went all the way up to near St. Helena Island. And the other ones just went up here into the Namibian coast. Walter's Shoal again featuring quite prominently and then up to the Mozambican area. And these are tracks of, of leatherback turtles from ourselves and from the Americans and the Italians. And so they just, just looks like spaghetti, but the, these are all of the tracks um, combined. And so the blue ones are our tracks. And like I've just shown you, it's gone up there. And so the Italians and the Americans have just have their tracks here. And you can see that the leatherbacks travel quite far distances. Now the loggerhead turtles, on the other hand, are very coastal. Um, this, these satellite tags were attached to the turtles um, while they were still nesting. So the loggerhead turtles will stick around from October to March. They'll come onto the beach to, to lay their eggs every um, 14 to 17 days or so. We wanted to know between those 14 and 17 days, where did they go? And you can see that they hardly travel very far. So they just stick to the coast and hang around until they are ready to lay eggs again. These satellite um, tracks were taken after the nesting season. So we wanted to know where the loggerhead turtles go when they are done nesting. And still very coastal. One came up here to the Cape Coast and the west coast of Madagascar, again, featuring, featuring very prominently. Okay, so we have had five decades of dedicated conservation and it is good news. Our coastal protection is clearly working. The leatherback trend is, is stable but not in decline and it is something that we need to keep an eye out on. The loggerhead trend is exceptional. We couldn't be happier. And we have found that the sustainable use is not in harvesting the turtles but in the provision of employment for the turtle monitors as well as providing jobs for the turtle tour operators. We invest in this um, monitoring very heavily financially and both logistically. And we've had a couple of hiccups, but hopefully, um, hopefully we can go and continue um, in our turtle nesting program into the future. The value of the program in sustaining populations in the region is, uh, I've gone through it with the turtle um, flipper tags, it is absolutely important for regional management. Just because our turtles nest on our beaches doesn't mean that other re areas in the regions um, shouldn't be looking after their areas as well. And these are very iconic animals. They are very special animals. They're endangered and critically endangered. And we should actually be very privileged as South Africans to have these turtles nesting on our beaches. And so the value of the Isimangaliso World Heritage, Heritage Site as our nesting grounds is absolutely priceless. Thank you.